Today we're going to talk about writing hypotheses. First thing I must tell you is you must determine your objective before you derive your hypothesis. As quoted in the book, a hypothesis is a tentative, not final and definite, and testable statement that proposes an explanation of an observable phenomenon. A hypothesis can predict a possible connection between two variables within a phenomenon or event, or it can predict a difference between two groups. A couple of important things to consider. One, a hypothesis is tentative because it's temporary. If a hypothesis is supported in one study, it does not make the connection between independent and dependent variables certain. So that's why you never say it's proven. One never says that a hypothesis is proven. It's either going to be supported or not supported by the data. Always support. When you write it in your paper, always say support. According to the book, there are two types of hypotheses. They they really the same, <laughs> but uh, I'll explain why and why not, or how they differ in, based on the book. So the book is telling you that a hypothesis can propose a possible connection between two variables, or it could predict the difference in groups. Uh, they overlap, and I'll explain why. So the first thing is, let's talk about hypotheses that predicts the difference between two groups. A hypothesis that compares the difference between two groups requires hypothesis testing statistics. This usually requires a student t-test for small samples and for large samples, a z-test. So when you have this kind of hypothesis, you have to have two of them. You have to have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. The null hypothesis usually states there's no difference between the groups. So, and in statistics terminology, it states that the sample observations result purely from chance. So I'll usually say, if um, giving planaria this drug and giving drug one and giving planaria drug two and a control, you're going to say that drug one, the regeneration of planaria with the use of drug one will be better than the, well, y'all did. The null hypothesis would say that the drug one of the planaria, the drug one given to the planaria, would have no difference in regeneration rate when, when drug two was given. That there was no difference between the drugs and the regeneration of planaria. However, the alternative hypothesis would say whichever drug it is, let's say drug one will have a will uh, allow planaria to regenerate at a faster rate than drug two. That would be an alternative hypothesis. So think of it like this. Alternative hypothesis would state that the sample observations are influenced by some non-random cause. So remember, two hypotheses. No hypothesis, which says there's no difference between the groups. Okay, That means that the observations result from chance. And an alternative hypothesis that states that the sample observations are influenced by some non-random cause. So that there would be a difference. When you talk about the other type of hypothesis, sure, you would say the one thing affects the other. And you would compare that to a control group. In this case, you're going to con compare, you would compare each condition to a control group and to each other. So you're doing more than one test. So a hypothesis that predicts the difference between two groups is the same as if you want to see it as a cause and effect. Because there is a cause and effect in this case. This drug will cause planaria to regenerate. That would be a cause and effect. But now this drug will cause planaria to regenerate better than the other drug and better than the control group. Now you're comparing groups, but you're still having a cause and effect between the drug and the regeneration of the planaria. So I think they all under the same umbrella, even though the book doesn't say so. Okay, so another, let's continue. A hypothesis that predicts a difference between two groups. After you collect the data, you have to analyze it statistically. So this is the way it will be written when you write your paper. You'll either reject the null hypothesis, meaning that the alternative hypothesis is correct, or you fail to reject the null hypothesis, which means that the null hypothesis is correct. Failing to reject the null hypothesis means that the null hypothesis 
is correct. And it would mean that there would be no difference between the two drugs on their effect on planaria. The majority of your projects should use this type of hypothesis. I want everybody using statistics in their papers. Statistics proves a point mathematically. That's why I always insist that you collect quantitative data that deals with numbers. So all majority of your projects should be using this type of hypothesis. If you have any problems, I can help you. If you need to do a hypothesis first that proposes a possible connection and then change it later on, when you do your research for your final paper, we could do that too. But you should know that they both overlap and they're both related to each other. So now we'll talk about the next type of hypothesis. A hypothesis that proposes a possible connection between two variables. When writing a draft of your hypothesis, you might start by using any of the following sentence formats as a guide. And I quoted it completely. I should quote it, but I put copied and pasted exactly. So if, let's say, let's use this. Uh, drug one in planaria regeneration. So if drug one is is related to planaria, then drug one will cause planaria regeneration to happen faster. All right. Another way of saying it is if if drug one speeds up uh, planaria uh, regeneration, then uh, if drug one is uh, is a um, if drug one is increased, then planaria regeneration will increase. If drug one is decreased, then planaria regeneration will decrease. We'll say that too. So, regenerate is the third scenario. Let's say uh, DV will predict the effect when IV. Uh, you will say something like this: um, Planaria's regeneration will increase when drug one is increased. So that's how you would do, as an example, these three types of um, of statements. I don't necessarily uh, believe that you have to do if and then statements either. I really don't. Uh, you can make a statement. Uh, this is the way I would tell you to do it. Drug one, when when drug one's concentration is increased, planaria's regeneration will increase. That's an acceptable hypothesis. It's a sentence. It's a statement, and it's a hypothesis. So you don't really need to use this if and then statement stuff. I don't necessarily believe in that. You can make a statement, you gotta, but you gotta make sure that the statement contains the independent variable and its effects, increase concentration, and planaria's effect to increase or decrease in regeneration rate or in growth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you don't have to write an if and then statement. It could be a just one sentence, a statement, one statement. So just going over this a little bit more, hypotheses that propose a possible connection between two variables and the other one too. It must contain three elements, the independent variable, the dependent variable, and a prediction of what kind of effect the independent variable will have on a dependent variable. This also has to be included for hypotheses where you compare groups. So it's all the same stuff. That's why I say that it, those two types of hypotheses are really the same type of hypothesis. The only difference is you have to generate uh, a null and an alternative hypothesis and test it statistically. So I'll say it again. You need to have an independent variable, dependent variable, and a prediction of what kind of effect the independent variable will have on the dependent. Predictions would include phrases that propose like differences such as increase or decrease, higher or lower, more or less, or faster and slower. Lastly, important things to consider. Your hypothesis, you have to remember, comes from established relationships that have already been determined in the background literature. You're basic, you guys are all basing your projects on previous experiments. That's how all science is done. You always base it. So the relationships or the cause and effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable all comes from some previous article. That's why you have all of that background research, and you're probably going to continue to look for background research while you carry out your you know, your project. A, pro a hypothesis also must state what kind of data will be collected. Planaria growth. The rate of growth would be, I would say, inches per days, inches per hours. The amount of growth in inches or centimeters. You know, growth, data collected. And your final research paper will determine, yeah, your final research paper will determine if your hypothesis was supported or rejected by the data. And then in your discussion, you have to explain why. Okay? If you have any questions, please contact me. 
This is the end of uh, how to design a hypothesis. Take care.